I'm from a funky family. I got two brothers, uh, Joey and Jimmy. My older brother, Joey, you ever see the commercial late at night? Are you an inventor? Do you know an inventor? You know what I'm talking about? And there's a black guy, all, all smiles. That's my brother, that black guy. <laughs> America is a country founded on family and innovation. And many of our greatest innovators were brothers. You got the Wright brothers, the Kennedys, and now, the DeResta brothers. <laughs> Okay, maybe not yet, but we're working on it. It ain't easy being a Duresta. This is my younger brother, Jimmy Duresta. He's a master craftsman, known across the country for his unique designs. Jimmy is the real brains of the family. My big specialty is solving problems and doing it quickly. That's my son, Matt. He's Jimmy's apprentice. I'm kind of the shop monkey, you know, I'll help out where I'm needed. Hey guys! Dinner's ready. And that's me, John DeResta. I'm a hustler. I'm a part-time stand-up comedian. Get the money! Part-time craftsman. And I'm always looking for the deal. I never know where my next dollar is coming from. Last but not least, there's my brother Joe. He works for one of those companies that is always looking for the next great invention. And BenHelp can help you try to patent your idea and submit it to companies. So we've got the businessman, the builder, and me, the mouth. Hey, what's up? We're trying to become America's next great innovators, and we have a better chance of succeeding if we do it together. Our business, it's a family affair. This is Duresta and Company. I'm the problem solver, the creative thinker. I work on both coasts. I work in New York, I also work in LA. I have clients in both cities. Typical clients in New York City would be like restaurants and bars. I do some interior stuff for them. Every now and again, I get a celebrity client. I worked in Leonardo DiCaprio's apartment a couple summers ago. I made a microphone award for Katy Perry. I've done the AK-47 guitar for White Clef Jean. I am Joe DeResta. I am the head of product development for InventHelp. We are the biggest invention company in the world. My job is to design, develop, and execute products. Thanks for booking time with me. Working with my brothers, the hope is, is we're going to get that next Snuggie, that next Monopoly. So we're trying to find that game changer that everybody hopes for. I was approached by a company that wants me to make a water balloon launcher. What's on the market now? What are we up against? Crossbow. It only shoots about 20 feet. We need to do something that's a lot better than that. It's a plastic crossbow that shoots yep, like that? Yeah. The guy wants this thing to shoot 40 feet. Why don't we make a mechanism that's like spring-loaded that looks like that? All right, that would be great if we could launch. Oh, all right, what if we made something that's kind of more like a rifle, and it's got this long base, and then it has this lever. This would stop at about 90 degrees, maybe a little shorter, 90 mm -hmm. degrees. That's what's going to make the ball go. You give it the momentum, and then when it stops short, the ball keeps going. If you could make this thing shoot almost 40 feet, I think I'll have a winner. I'm going to LA to work on a George Dickel project with John. I'm going to set aside some time, and then I'll Skype you. I'll show you what I come up with. All right, cool. So my son and I have a woodworking business here in Los Angeles, and it's been going really good. Over the last six or eight months, our business has grown leaps and bounds. And one of the reasons is because Jimmy DeResta, he's shown us a lot of tricks, and the money's starting to really come in. What's up? Yo. Just what the doctor ordered. Look at that. Oh, yeah, wow. these are perfect. Who's the asshole now? They look great. 70 bucks each, is that a good deal? Yeah. yeah, usually they go for like 100 to 125. Having Jimmy DeRester on your team is like the equivalent of having Larry Bird if you're a basketball player. Jimmy's got some really cool clients. He's got a new big corporate client in George Dickel Whiskey. George Dickel guys are having an event here in LA. They want a focal point at the event. And what I've done is I've taken three of their barrels and we're turning it into furniture. They plan on taking two of the three barrels we have, I'm gonna cut them in half, and those two barrels will become four chairs. We're gonna cover the cushions with cowhide. I want it to look kind of like a cowboy theme. And then we're gonna use that last barrel, we're gonna make a table base. It's gonna look very rugged, very rustic. Dude, the best part, the guy had like seven llamas. You know what a llama is? It's like yeah. an ostrich that has a weight problem. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, what is that? Oh. Is that my car leaking? No, no, no. This, this thing has a hole in it. Yeah, is that whiskey? It could be whiskey, it could be rainwater. Ew. What does it taste like? It tastes like old rainwater, whiskey, and llama urine. Eat anything. <laughs> I will eat anything. These are great. These are awesome. 
These are what we're looking for? Yeah, these are whiskey barrels. Whiskey barrels are Whoa. made out of white oak. They char the inside with fire. Wow. Whiskey is made from three main ingredients, barley, water, and yeast. It goes through a six-step process, and after it is distilled, it is left to age in wooden barrels, which give the whiskey its color and its flavor before it's bottled. And the fire, when they put the whiskey in here, you know what the whiskey, and they put it in here, it's white right out of the distiller, it's called white dog, and then it turns that amber color while it's in the barrels. And the charred wood inside gives the whiskey its flavor. Did I tell you about the llama jerky I got? Taste it. It's tough the llama jerky, right? Oh! <laughs> Oh, so we're gonna make four chairs on a table? Yeah, those two I'm gonna cut in half. And then each half is gonna become a seat. Once we cut them, I'll get Matt working on re-waxing them and polishing them up. It'll turn a little orangey dark. I think it'll look really good. Yeah. Put your finger in the bunghole. This was like you at band camp. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm heading out. I got a couple of errands to do. All right, all right? I'm bringing these things to Johnny O in Santa Monica. It's a very typical day here at the shop. I'm running around, I'm collecting money, I'm seeing clients. Jimmy and Matt are back here working. And I have a stand-up show tonight. I'm headlining at John Lovett's Comedy Club. It's a big deal. It literally never ends. Johnny O is a client, and I really like the guy a lot. I'll tell you the two things I like about Johnny O. Number one, he's really witty and really funny and a very positive attitude. Number two, his check's clear. Thank you. Business has been growing so fast that we're dealing with more and more vendors. And I met John, and he pulls up in this van. He looks like Spicoli peeling out of this thing. And I'm thinking, who the hell is this? He built a custom bar for us. Did a great job. Done about four or five projects with him since. Leave the doors open. There's nothing worth stealing. They could steal the van. I wouldn't even care. He's a nuts and bolts guy, and our stuff looks great. Store is really looking nice. With my help, thank you. Dude! Johnny O. Nice to see you. You too. Thanks for your patience. Yeah. This, this, I know it's gonna be a this new This is gonna sign. be the, the sign. It's and gonna what go is it above, gonna... It's gonna go above the, uh, the button down shirts here and it's gonna promote our Johnny O tweener button. The tweener button is? It solves the second button dilemma. This is our tweener button. You know, it goes in between the second and third button. Guys are always struggling with it. Should I button the second button? Should I not button it? You look a little too buttoned up. When you unbutton it, you look a little too... Armenian. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> so... Now, how about the shelves that I put together? These are world class. I call it splinter-free wood. Now, we made this out of rock-hard maple. This is the second hardest wood on Earth. Did you know that? I had no idea. Okay, do you know what the first hardest wood on Earth is? Not a clue. Do you have my check? I got your check. You do? Yeah. Cool. You Good seeing you. All right. Thanks, man. Yeah, you got it. Rock hard maple, bro. We've been hired by George Dickel to build these pieces of furniture for this event. And my plan is to take these barrels that we have here, cut them in half, burning, make a leather seat. I want to do sort of a cowboy look. So I want to use a cowhide and the table for these chairs to go around. And it's going to be the focal point of this event that they're having. So I'm off the line slightly, but somebody once taught me many years ago, as long as this curve is yeah. fair and sexy, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be exactly where you want it. Yeah, you can compensate for that. Yeah. I definitely admire Jimmy. I've always looked up to him my whole life. He's just so creative. He just always comes up with a better way to do stuff that no one's ever thought of. Whoa. Whoa. Smell that whiskey? Smells like, like my Aunt Joanne. <laughs> oh. Oh. Look at how. See how much the whiskey yeah. soaks into this surface? Wow. That's what gives the whiskey its flavor, the white oak, cortisone. Barrels are the old way we used to ship products all over the world, and they're like an instant antique, although they're still used every single day in the whiskey business and the liquor business. It's nice to be able to bring them back and repurpose them, shine them up. They look really cool. All right, now we're gonna pull up where Jimmy wants the cowhide to check out this house. That looks like you might have a sex slave inside of there. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good, how you doing? I'm fine. Hi, what's your name? Kathy. Kathy, my name's John. Is this a horse or a no, cow? No, cow. This is a cow? Mm-hmm. But like, how much is this one? 
This one is 950. Oh, wow. all, uh, all price is different. Wait, how much are you looking for? Uh, about four, four fifty. What about this one? Um, four ninety. Oh, okay, four ninety. We're going down. How much is this, Kathy? Four fifty. Now we have just a small business. It's me, my brother, and my son. Money's a little tight. I'll tell you what. Do three and a quarter. Uh. I got cash. U.S. Cash. <laughs> 350. No. Okay. You got a deal. I like you. I like you too. Where's my money? Demanding. You sound like my wife already. Maybe me and you should get married. Do you want to marry me? How old are you? I'm 52. Get out of here. I'm 48. Really? So you are younger than me? Cougar. Cougar? Cougar. Older woman. Sexy. Huh? <laughs> Any given moment, I'm working on all kinds of different projects. And today, I'm working on the George Dickel Furniture Project, but I'm also working on a balloon launcher. My brother Joey has a client he thinks he could place this product with. And so I am trying to come up with a new way to make a competitive balloon launcher. And that's what I'm working on today in steel. It's going to basically be like a trebuchet, which is a thing that throws a diseased yeah. cow into You ever watch those pumpkin throw shows? That's exactly yeah. what we got here. John talked a little bit about some of the danger zone here. Yeah. I have an idea to put a big shroud here that covers all this and like then it gives us. A fender. Exactly, like a fender that'll, that'll encompass that sweep. Yeah, yeah. So that no one's hands get caught here or back here. Yeah, yeah. And then that'll give us some room for graphics ultimately for the product. Yeah. Let's see what Uncle Joey has to say and we'll take it from there. Yeah, I think it looks good. how heavy it would be. I went to Home Depot too. I got all that stuff you wanted. Nice color. That's nice. Brindle. Right? Is that the color? Yeah. This is actually really pretty. Did you see the barrels? Come over here. Take a look. No. Let's I, carry I, it in. Let's see what it looks like next to this. Okay. Yeah. These are going to be the seat cushions. Nice. Yeah, Man. I sanded it all down and then polyurethaned it. And you see the charring? Sure. What a turnaround. Man, these came out awesome. Where are we going to get cushions from? Can you go and get us a couple of couch cushions? I gotta get a nap and I got a show tonight. I gotta get a pre-show lay down. Matt, you, you think you can get us some couch cushions? Yeah, I mean, sure. <laughs> Why do you keep combing your mustache? <laughs> I like it, it feels good. I know it's weird, but I like it. It moves it all the same way. It keeps it congruent. That's an SAT word. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy just sent me out to go look for a, uh, an old couch to rip open the cushion, take the cushion out in turn put that under the cowhide my dad just bought and that'll be the cushion for these barrel chairs. We're always looking for stuff on the streets. Instead of going to a store, we'll drive around for an hour and see if we can find it on the street first. In North Hollywood, there's couches everywhere. We don't really know where one is, but you know, we're on the hunt. We're always on the hunt. I now live in a little town called North Hollywood. Anyone in North Hollywood? Fucking North Hollywood, there's a rotting couch every 40 feet. You know what I'm talking about? I get woken up by a rooster. Anybody? When you go in the people's garbage, they have the weirdest shit. I think we found cat bones once. Yeah, here's a couch right here. What was that, less than five minutes? Someone already took the cushions. There's still some good meat in here, though. Yeah, I guess you could say I'm sort of a sofa butcher. This is great meat right here. Oh yeah. Half the people that see us doing this know why we're doing it. The other half have no idea and think we're crazy homeless people that are just cutting this up for no reason. Battle scar. So that's one couch that didn't even have the cushions. That's how much stuff we got off it. And that should be enough. You gotta do this stuff quick. There's a lot of cops in North Hollywood. Even though you're technically not doing anything wrong, they don't like to see it. Good crowd tonight. My two daughters are here. I have three kids. Their names are, uh... <laughs> I got their names tattooed. Look, good white trash. Matthew, Matthew, Sabrina, and Shannon. And Shannon is spelt wrong. A-N-O-N, how the fuck am I supposed to know, right? <laughs> None of these assholes answered the cell phone when I was at the tattoo parlor.
A quick update, we got the George Dickel table and chairs ready to go. We worked all night. My George Dickel rep is gonna come take a look at the table we made. I'm sure he's gonna be happy. Got a little bit more to do on the water balloon gun. I have a scheduled call with my brother Joey. I have to demonstrate it for him while he's on Skype. Where's that him? Can you get us? Oh, there he is. There he is, he's moving. Hey guys, what's going on? Joey's the suit. We have a lot of patents under our belt already, but if we're gonna make a name for ourselves in the invention world, our brother Joe is the perfect connection. About 20 years ago, we did the gurgling guts. We ended up selling 10 million balls that squish. You could always stumble on that one game changer. You're gonna go from zero to hero. All right, so Joe, what I'm gonna show you is, is the mechanism that's gonna launch it. It's missing some of the safety stuff which will come around once we go to the plastic model. So the main first problem is how do you get the, somebody to just throw a water balloon 20 or 30 feet? Matt, put this picture up of your dad. We got a target. Can you see that wall in the back? So let's give it a shot. OK. So here, here we go. go. <laughs> here we go. go. Hey. Oh, good oh. shot. Where's the real model? <laughs> I'm going to tighten the spring. OK. Here we go. Oh, jeez. Yeah. All right, guys, like the concept, obviously the execution isn't quite there yet. If you can get that to launch a balloon 40 feet consistently, we'll be in business. All right, Joe, I got it. I know the notes I'm going to keep working on. I'll see you soon. Everything's rocking and rolling. Jeff, my George Dickel rep, he's here right now. What's up, brother? Come take a look at the table we made. Jimmy Drista. Confident he's going to like it. Come on in. All right, here it is. Oh man, that looks great, Jenny. Thanks, brother. Love you dig it? Yeah, it's awesome. I can't Thank believe you. those are the same barrels I saw the pictures of. Right? I know, the, the polyurethane really brings it back to life, right? Oh, yeah. Man, I really love the whole concept of this thing. You know, the, the whiskey barrels at a craftsmanship is really, really done well. Yeah, I see you didn't miss our branding on the top. I wanted it to look kind of vintage. Have a seat, check it out. Right. Guys, sit down. You know what this looks like? It almost looks like the end of a barrel head. You know what I'm talking about? If oh, there was a 10-foot barrel? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nice, right? Good job, man. Thanks, brother. Good job. Appreciate it. I kind of, I did most of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah anytime. <laughs> you probably did it all. Huh? It's truly a one-of-a-kind piece of furniture that we'll be proud to have. It's going to be great in our corporate headquarters as well as our show next week. Thanks, brother. Good job, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right, You're George welcome. Dickel. All right, so here it is. Since you've seen it on Skype, I've been able to get rid of all the bungee cords. Awesome. We got it down to one good spring. This is sort of the beginning of the safety mechanism. It's obviously still very rough, but everything logistically is where it should be for a final product. I measured off from where we are to pass the grate is 45 feet. Ready? There you go. Boom. <laughs> Winner. Yeah, in the hole, in the hole, in the hole. Oh, pretty consistent, right? That's amazing. This is totally <laughs> what they're asking for. This is exactly what they're asking yeah. for. Very yeah! Good. Very good. <laughs> this is shooting consistently 40 feet at least, which is better than anything on the market. Go. In the basement, right in, right in, right in. Yep. I can't believe that he pulled it off. Uh, again, that's why I call Jimmy the genius. Yeah, I believe that the company's going to be very excited when they see this. Ultimately, once it's engineered and we do a couple of CGI design drawings of this, it will be prototyped in plastic. And if everything goes right, you'll see this for summer 2014. Yeah! yeah. Us the rest is make a great team, I must say. Between Jimmy's genius designs, Joey's invention connections, and my mouth. You look like the ladies that be at Laughlin playing the penny slots for fucking 19 hours. Just to get a free glass of George Dickel whiskey. It's only a matter of time before we hit it big. <laughs>